Okay, welcome to another game of Frostgrave Beneath the Ice. This is my solo campaign, custom campaign that I've created. If you want to play this, you can download all of the uh, PDFs that have the rules and setup for how to play it. Uh, if you go in the video description below, you'll find out how to sign up for my free weekly newsletter. And I put all of my free content in that newsletter uh, in an area called custom content. You can download it, play it, and, uh, and also the newsletter is kind of cool. It shares with you all kinds of news related to RPGs, war games, Kickstarters, you know, all that stuff. All right, this scenario is called Slippery Descent. Now, before I get going, my party in the last game, if you didn't watch it, in the last game, my party found two doors. They were able to defeat all the monsters, and they were able to, uh, there was a random roll on, an, on a second door to see if it led to the surface, because right now I've been trapped beneath the surface. My heroes did find a door. They went back to town, and I got a replacement thug to replace the one that died. So now my party is back to full strength, four uh, four warband members, uh, an apprentice, and a wizard. The reason I'm limiting it to four in the story is that these hallways are tight, everything's very cramped, and the wizard has decided after experimenting that, you know what, it probably does work best with a smaller warband. So you can increase it to larger if you really want to. That could make the game a little easier. If you want to make the game a little harder, ramp up the stats on the monsters or increase their numbers. In this scenario, my group has to get from this door to this door to escape. There are some obstacles in their way. There are four starting. There are four ice ghouls. They're a little tougher than the normal, normal ghouls you find up, up above. And the, there are some ice uh, slides here. Now, if a party member touches the ice, uh, they have to make a will roll with a target number of 13. If they fail, they slide to the end, it goes in this direction, in this direction, and they fall down, they, which means they've got to spin an action to stand up. Intentionally, they can choose to slide, which moves them much faster. So there is that. Uh, there are two chests. Uh, the chests can be open. Uh, each one has two items inside. Uh, an item can be picked up by a Warband member without penalty of movement. You don't have to pick up the chest. You can open it and see what's inside and decide if you want it. Uh, last, the door is got to be, it's covered in ice, so you have to pound on the door and do five amount of, five damage to it in order to get all the ice chipped off to escape. Uh, there are four starting ghouls. Uh, the ghouls uh, smell flesh, so they will come running for me. And the ghouls also, if uh, at the beginning of each even round, so two, four, six, eight, ten, I'll roll a d20. On a 13 or higher, a new ghoul, ghoul will appear at my entry door. So they're, they're, they're uh, coming at me from both sides. So you're going to have to move in quick and watch your, watch your rear to see if, a, a, or cover your rear to make sure a ghoul doesn't sneak up on you. Uh, that is all. I'm going to do some last minute cleanup here, get everything set up right, double check my cameras, make sure everything's good, and then we will get started. Check out the new RPG and Wargame newsletter. Each week, the tabletop engineer shares news, products, Kickstarters, and much more related to the gaming hobby. It's free to subscribe, so check out the link in the video description below to sign up. Okay, I have a level 4 wizard now. Um, the last one I used my successful spells and some of the creatures I killed, I used that XP to ramp up. I've increased my health to 16, which has increased my... Uh, Prentice's health to 14, and I reduced the cost to cast heal from 11 slash 13 to 10 slash 12. 10 for the wizard, 12 for the apprentice. The heal spell needs to start coming down so I can use it. All right, uh, as with all of the solo games, the order of work, uh, the order of play is uh, wizard phase, apprentice phase, creature phase, and then soldier phase. But group activation is still allowed. So, uh, my guys don't know yet about the ghouls, so they are going to make a run for these treasure tokens. And I am going to activate my wizard first. Wizard is going to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to take the archer with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to take the a thug with me. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he'd be right here, sorry. Okay, uh, then my wizard is going to cast a spell. Let me cast Enchant Weapon. I need to roll an 8. I'm going to cast that on the Thug. I rolled a nat 20, so yeah. The Thug with the helmet. Uh, this will be... These are Thugs. Let's see, I'm going to just write in Helmet so I'll remember who's who. He is now plus 2 Fight. And by the way, my, um, my archer is plus three because in the last game I got a bow that was plus one. So he is plus three to shoot. And that is a successful spell, so I'll mark that down. And that is the end of the wizard's phase. I could double move them, which I think is what I'm going to do. They can move one, two, three. One, two, three. And he spots the ghoul, but too late. He's already double moved. He cannot shoot. Uh, it is now the apprentice's phase. I yell back to my apprentice, we've got ghouls. So the apprentice is going to run, one, two, three, four, five, six. She's going to tell her man-at-arms to get up here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And everybody has moved six, so it's really easy to remember. And my thug, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so he is up. Then she is going to cast... Hmm. I can cast Enchant Weapon on the bow because it, it's plus three, but I can add plus one to it. But you know, I'd rather... I'd rather cast... Hmm. I got Telekinesis, Wizard Eye, Heal, Fog, Push, Elemental Bolt. I'm not quite sure what I want to do here. Um, hmm. Let's do Enchant Armor. It's a 10. I'm going to try to cast that on my uh, Archer. I rolled a 1. So I failed by 9, which means I take a point of damage. So she is down to 13. And that was a failed spell. And then my soldiers are going to double move. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Now it is the creature phase. Now, the creatures are ice ghouls. And these ice ghouls have a movement of six, uh, a fight of two, shoot plus zero, armor 12, will plus two, and health 12. They are undead and they are ice covered, which gives them the bonus armor of plus two. All right, let's see what happens. This one right here, I need to put them on squares and they will come a-running. So this first one will move six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then double move three. They do not care about the ice. They move fine over it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. And then these guys will double move. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, they're all gang. I didn't think about this. I've got a bottleneck here. Okay. Um, that is the end of the creature phase. All my soldiers group activated. So I don't have a soldier phase. It is the end of round number one. And I'm going to track the round with a D10. So this was round number one. So now we are moving on to round number two. Now remember, at the end, was it? Uh, let me see. At the beginning of each numbered round, roll a d20. On a 13, a new ice goal appears. So a 13 or higher, five, none appears. If it does, it will appear back here near my entry point. All right, my turn. The wizard will activate with these two. He's within three inches. So he will move one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna back up a bit and they will activate. Uh, the bowman will shoot at the closest one. Uh, that is a plus three to shoot, and the ice school is plus two. I use blue, uh, enemies green, plus three to shoot. I rolled a 10 to its 18, so it misses. All right, and then this guy will charge forward and fight. That is my thug. He is plus one fight. No, he's plus two fight. Thugs are plus 
Aren't they plus two? They're plus two. I got this wrong. Plus two to fight, and the ghoul is plus two. So a five to 16, which is really unfortunate because a 21 will go through my armor and my thug is down already. Ugh. So that leaves my wizard to fire a spell. What do I have? Fog, enchanter, telekinesis, push. Elemental bolt, that's all I got. I need a 14. I got a four, I missed by 10, so I lose two health. Ow, down to 14. And that is a failed spell. And uh, the only other one that can go is the archer. She, she will move one, two, three. And now it is my apprentice's turn. The apprentice can see the uh, ghoul, so she will activate one, two, three, four, five. These guys will move one, two, three, four. Five, well, hold on, yeah, five, six. I'm gonna have him engage. Uh, that is Man at Arms is my plus three, is it? Plus three fight versus plus two. I rolled an eight to his 14. Man, I am rolling bad tonight. 16 versus armor three is three health. He's down to nine. Um, this guy was way back here. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can attack. And he gets, uh, he's plus two, and he gets plus two. So plus four versus plus two. A four to two, I unfortunately lose. Man, I am in trouble. And my apprentice will fire off elemental, oh, enchant armor. It needs a 10. I got a seven. Three points is not enough. It's a failed spell, but I don't take any damage. And now it is the ghoul's turn. So we'll start with the closest one. He will fight this one, uh, plus two versus plus uh, five. I, well, I'll reroll that. He got a natural one. Ooh, 19. 19 plus five is 24, minus 12 is 13, so that ghoul is dead. All right, uh, next one will step up, and so will this one, so they're even. This one can move around and flank. So let's do the close one first. Uh, that is plus three versus plus two. I rolled a 16 to his 15, so I hit. 16 plus 3 is 19, minus 12 is 7. He's got 5 health left. And then this one will attack, and he gets a bonus of plus 2. So it's plus 2 versus plus 4. And I rolled a 19 to 2. 19 plus uh, 2 is 21, minus 12 is 9. So he's got 3 health left, and I'm going to shove him back since I won. And I'm going to shove this one back since I won. And then this one will attack right here. Plus two versus plus two. I rolled a six to his three. I win. I will shove him back. And the reason I did that was so my archer could take a shot on the next turn. All right. That is it, although I am down a thug. Okay. Uh, soldier phase. Again, all my soldiers moved. So um, it is now back to the wizard phase and we are on turn number three. Wizard. Wizard will, I need to, I, I don't know. I need to clear out these ghouls. All right, so the wizard will move here so you can get eyes on that one. Uh, I will cast elemental bolt. I need a 14, come on. I got a seven, so I miss by seven. I lose a point of damage, or I take a point of damage down to 13, and that is a failed spell. But he was within three of the archer, so the archer I will tell to shoot at, let's tell the archer to shoot at the wounded one right here. I have line of sight. So that is uh, plus three versus plus two. I got a 17 to his eight. 17 plus three is 20, minus 12 is eight. He is dead. All right, and then my archer will move here to the treasure. And that is it for the wizard phase. The, the apprentice will move to the, to the chest. She cannot group activate with these two, so they're gonna have to move on soldier phase. And she will cast 
Elemental Bolt. It's a long shot. I need a 16. Ugh. Uh. Let me do Enchant Armor. I'll do Enchant Armor. 10 or higher. I rolled a 4. She misses by 6. So nothing happens. This, the, uh, the Wizard cast and did get a success. So I forgot to mark that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I didn't, I didn't track a spell. That, there should be an even number of spells. But anyway, the Apprentice failed. And now it is the ghoul's turn. So the closest one, the ghoul will step up. I have an ally. So um, I get plus three, plus five versus plus two. I rolled a six to his two. Six plus five is 11. His armor is 12, but I can still shove him back. And then this one steps forward, and that is plus two versus plus two. I rolled a one to his four. His four plus two is six, so he's still engaged, but he didn't do anything. We are now to the soldier phase. All right. My man at arms will move here and attack. Plus five versus plus two. I got a, so oh, ooh, one to his 17. 19 versus, oh, that's not good. 19 versus 13 is six. He's down to three health, and he is wounded. All right, my thug better knock this guy out. Thug is plus two or plus four versus plus two. And I got a nine versus his six. Nine plus four is 13. One point of damage and I can shove him away. And he's got, uh, he has one point of damage on him. <clears throat> Let's see. That one has five health left. This one is one damage, so I have to remember that. Okay, uh, that is it for the soldier phase. We are to the end of round three. It is the beginning of round four, so I got to roll to see if another ghoul appears. A 14, one does. One appears right here. It will move on the enemy phase, creature phase. So the wizard, the wizard needs to cast heal on my man at arms or he's going to die. So to cast heal, first off, I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to cast heal. I need a 10. I got a 2. I missed by 8. So I take out another point of damage. Down to 12. That was a failed spell. Man. Okay. So I failed and I moved. Uh, apprentice. The Apprentice will try to cast heal on the Man-at-Arms. She needs a 12. I got a 19. So I can add 5 health to my Man-at-Arms. He's up to 8. And his wounded goes away. And she will instruct the archer to shoot at the wounded one here with five health left. That is plus three versus plus two. I got a 17 to its one. 17 plus three is 20 minus 12 is eight. With five health left, this one dies. Okay. The apprentice did not move. So she will move this turn. She, oh, you know what? He was supposed to slide. Actually, let me make a will roll on him since he stepped forward on the ice. I totally forgot to do that. Uh, target number 13, he fails. So he slides and he's down. I'll, I'll do this one. Three, he also slid and fell. All right, so I'm going to have to deal with that at some point. Okay, uh, it is now the creature phase. So this creature will run and attack my downed man-at-arms. Uh, he's still got to hit it through his armor. So he's plus two versus plus three. And he hits. Nine does not go through his armor of 11. Or no, 13, excuse me. So he's good. Uh, this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Coming for my apprentice. And now it is soldier phase. Well... Soldier phase, he has to spend an action to stand up, and he's engaged, so he could attack, which I'm gonna do. Plus, he's got, he's got low health. Plus three versus plus two. I rolled a two to its 17. Oh boy, that's 19 versus 13 is six. He's down to two health and he's wounded again. So this one will stand up and move. He's engaged him, but unfortunately he cannot take any more actions this turn. Uh, that is all for the soldier phase. We are now on turn number five. The wizard. The wizard casts heal 
on the man at arms. I need a 10 or higher, 10 or higher, 12. All right. So the man at arms is up to seven and he's no longer wounded. And the wizard will stay put. He will instruct the archer to shoot at this one. Plus three versus plus two. 13 to its nat 20, it misses. The apprentice will back up and cast, oh, this is a long shot, elemental bolt. I need a 16, I got a seven. I missed by nine, so I take a point of damage. She is down to 12, and that is a failed spell. And that is it for the apprentice. Enemy, this one will attack the weakest, plus five versus plus two. I rolled a 10 to its 14. That's 16 versus 15. It wins, 16 versus 13 is three. He's down to four health. That poor man at arms, and he's wounded again. And then this one, the closest enemy will be, well, the one with the lowest health, it would attack the weakest. Would that be my archer? The archer has 10 health, so it would come in and try to attack the archer. Now, I have an ally next to me, so I get plus two. The archer is plus one fight. Plus two is plus three versus plus two. I got an 11 to its 14, so it wins. 14 plus two is 16. 16 minus 11 is five. My archer has five health left. I haven't even looked in the chest yet. All right. Soldier phase. These guys have got to be. So Man-at-Arms is going to fight. He's plus five versus plus two. And I lost. 16 versus 13 is three. He's down to one health. <laughs> oh, man. And my thug will fight. He is plus four versus plus two. And seven versus seven. So he will push it back a little bit. Um... That was the soldier phase. The archer had already fired. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is round number six. Does a monster appear? It does not. All right. Wizard phase. Wizard will cast heal. I need a 10. I got a 10. I will put five on the man at arms. He's back up to six. And he's not injured again. Uh, he will... He will he will move to this chest. My apprentice will instruct the archer to fight. So it's plus three versus plus two. I got a 19 to its 11. 19 plus three is 22. Minus 12 is 10 damage. He has two health left and I shove him back. And now the apprentice can try to cast elemental bolt to kill this thing. I need a 16. I got a nat 20. All right, elemental bolt. By the way, I need to look it up. Where's my book? One second. Elemental bolt is obviously an elemental spell. I make a plus seven shooting attack. So plus seven versus plus two. Come on, hit this guy. I got a 10 to its four. 17 versus 12 is five and I kill it. Ooh. Okay. Um, that was The Apprentice, and that was a successful spell. And now it is the enemy phase. The enemy steps forward. He will try to kill my man-at-arms. Plus five versus plus two. I rolled a nat 20. Trust me, 25 is going to kill this one. And with that, the enemies are dead. So I've got a little bit of time here to try and get these chests open and go. Remember, one can appear here on a roll. So... What I'm going to do on my turn is I'm going to move the soldiers back. Now, when they step on the ice, they have to make a, a real roll of 13 or higher. 19 will do it. So he can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This guy has a will of plus 0. And he makes an 11, so he fails and falls down again. Um, that is all for the soldier phase. We are now to turn number 7. All right, my wizard is next to the chest. He will open the chest 
And that is chest one and chest two, if I remember right. Chest one has a potion of healing and a grimoire. So I will go ahead, just like the wizard should, I will take the grimoire. This is game number three. I got a grimoire and the wiz wizard. All right, so he opened it and picked it up, and now he'll move. One, two, three, four, five. He's not going to cross the ice yet. The apprentice will activate. She will tell the, the well. She'll tell the archer to open chest number two as an action, and <sighs> there's a hand weapon plus one fight. He does have a hand weapon, I believe. The archer does, or is it a dagger? It's a dagger. Darn it. Okay. Uh, so the, my archer will take the shield but cannot use it. And that is a plus one armor. So that is with my archer. So he opened it and took it, and then he'll move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Covering the rear. All right. Um... The apprentice moves and will take what else is in chest two. We'll take the hand weapon. So the apprentice has the hand weapon plus one. And she already moved, so she can't move again. And then this guy will step forward and take the remaining item, which was a healing potion. It's a healing potion. And you know what? He'll go ahead and drink it. He gets plus five. So he's up to 11. He's almost max health. Let me erase all this. And he's back to 11 health, so he's okay. That is the end of turn 7. Turn 8, we have to roll to see if a monster appears. Uh, 13 or higher? It does. So a monster appears back here. Alright, i got to get across here. Um, it's basically running for the door. Wizard phase. The wizard will choose to slide and fall. And that was a move. And then for their action, he will stand up. The archer will move. Uh, I need, uh, no, the archer will choose to slide and fall and stand up. That was their action. Um, the apprentice. The apprentice will go one, two, three, four, and slip and fall and has to stay down. This guy. Oh no, he's a soldier, sorry. So this one will move one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. He will run for it. One, two, three, slip and fall. I'll put him over here. All right. All right, now it's the soldier phase. Uh, all my soldiers activated. So it is now turn number eight. Or uh, nine, excuse me. Turn number nine. All right. Um, wizard phase. I'm just going to run for it. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Steps on it, slides, and falls. The apprentice will tell... I'm going to tell these two. Well, this one has to stand up, and then he will move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can't quite get there. This one will stand up and move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, he's right here. And then uh, her turn is over. So this one will run at the archer and engage. The archer is plus one fight versus plus two. I rolled a 12 to its 10. That's 12 to my 13. 13 versus 12 is one damage on him. And I'll push him back. And now it's the soldier phase. Soldier will run. Well, move. Actually, I'm going to shoot at him, then move. Uh, shoot is plus three versus plus two. I got a 14 to his nine. 14 plus three is 17 minus what is five. He's got six damage on him. So he's halfway there. And then he'll move. One, two, three, four, five. That's as far as he'll go. That is the end of round nine. Round 10. Does a ghoul appear? 13 or higher? No. All right. Wizard phase. The wizard will stand up and move to the door. Done. Apprentice. 
will move through the allies, one, two, three, four, five, and fall, slide and fall. Soldiers cannot move, they were too far away. Actually, I could have activated one or two of them with a wizard, but I'm gonna leave them there. He will move, one, two, three, four, five, six. He attacks my apprentice, but I do have an ally. So plus one, plus two is plus three versus plus two. I rolled a six to his nine. Nine plus two is 11 to my, did I roll a nine? Oh, I, I rolled a six, I'm pretty sure. Six plus uh, three is nine to its 11. 11 versus 11, uh, my archer's um, 11 is nothing. All right, now I can gang up. Soldier phase. Uh, ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send this guy all the way around and get that plus four from two allies. So it's plus six versus plus two. And I got a nine versus it's 16. Oh, that's not good. Nine plus two, four, six is 15. 16 plus two is 17 versus 10 is seven damage. Uh, he's got three health left. That is helmet guy. He's got three health, so he is injured. And man at arms will go. He's plus three, plus four. He's plus seven versus plus two. Four versus two. That's 11. His armor is 12, so I don't do any, it doesn't do any damage, but I'll shove him back one. And that, and then I'm going to move one to slide and fall. And then my archer will, sh uh, will shoot. He's plus three versus plus two. I got an eight to its 18, so the ar arrow misses. It is now turn number 11. No roll for monster. And, oh man, what to do, what to do. Okay, the wizard needs to attack the door. The wizard is plus, I think he's plus zero. No, he's plus two fight. Plus two fight versus uh, 10 on the door. Uh, you have to roll for the door. The door doesn't do any damage, but it still resists. Uh, 13 does, does not beat, 13 plus two is 15, does not beat a 17. So the wizard does no damage. Um, these two guys are within, I tell him to stand and move to the door, so he's done. Apprentice will stand. This is a wall, so she technically cannot see him. So she will move over here and cast heal on, can she see him? No, hold on, she'll move over here. Can she see him? Not really. No, nope, she can't. So I'm going to cast heal on myself, 12, a 15 will do it. So that brings me back up to full health. Yep. And that is a successful spell. Oops. Okay. Enemy phase. Enemy will step over and, and fight. Uh, the soldier's plus two. It's plus two versus plus two. 17 versus it's five. 19 versus... 12 is 7, it only has 6, so it dies. All right, now I gotta get the door open, but I think I've got this. I got all the treasures, just gotta get to the door. Okay, soldier phase. I tell him to move, he moves, slides, and falls. He moves and falls. And it is now turn 12. Does an enemy appear? 13 or higher. 11, it does not. All right, let's get this door open. Wizard, plus, uh, we'll, we'll hit it, plus two, uh, 13 to its 14, I miss. And then I will move and cast heal. Oh, I can't, I, I attacked, so I move and I'm done. The man at arms is plus three versus plus zero. I rolled a five versus four. Uh, five plus three is eight, but its armor is 10, so it does no damage. Uh, my apprentice. Actually, I will tell, this guy is not healed. I will tell my archer to stand up. I will tell him to stand up, and she will cast heal. She needs a 12. I got a six, so she loses uh, one point. She is down to 13. And that was a failed spell. Uh, enemy phase, no enemy phase. Soldier phase. Uh, the archer will shoot at the door. Why not? You can you can do that. 
Uh, 13 or plus three versus plus zero. A natural one loses. <laughs> um, golly, this is ridiculous. He activated, he activated, he had to stand up and he can only take one action because he's wounded. That is the end of the turn. Um, so now we're up to turn 13? 13. And the wizard, wizard will step over. Plus two, four to its not six. I can't beat this door. The man at arms, plus three, five versus 11. Good Lord, this door. And the man at arms will step aside. The archer will fire. Actually, hold on. Uh, Prentice before, will go first. Uh, tries to cast heal. I need a 12. I got a 9. I will take 3 points of damage to make that a success. She's down to 10. That is a success. And I will cast 5 on my guy. He goes back up to 8, so he is no longer wounded, so he can take an extra action. Enemy phase, there are no enemies. Soldier phase, this guy will shoot at the door. Plus three versus plus zero. 17, there we go. 17, 20 versus armor 10 is 10 damage. You only need five to get in. The door is open. This guy will run through. And that is the end of the phase. Now I have to roll to see if a monster appears. It doesn't really matter. It does not. All my enemy, all my guys on their next turn will flee this floor, except for dead thug here. And uh, that's too bad. I already, I'm down, a, down another soldier. This level does not allow you to go back up to the, uh, back upstairs. So you're gonna have to follow to the next scenario, scenario number four, to see what happens. My warband is down a soldier, so it's getting pretty difficult. They are also going deeper. This episode is called the Slippery Descent. Uh, as this goes deeper, the monsters are going to get a little more difficult. I hope you like this. Um, this is one of those campaigns I came up with mainly because I like playing Frostgrave, but I don't get to play with opponents very often. So I wanted a game that was fast, and that's why it's on a two by two area. And I wanted it to be just fast and furious, just, you know, lots of, lots of combat, get in, get out, and move on to the next episode. It's not as long as a normal player versus player Frostgrave um, by any means. A uh, little less strategy, because usually it's just try to get out before you die, which is, which is the, adds a little stress to the game. But um, definitely fun. I'm having a really good time coming up with these scenarios and testing them before I release them to you. This one, I, this one, oh man, this ghouls. They really, uh, they came at me. That was bad. All right, that's all I got. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Thanks for joining me on this new Frostgrave scenario. Once again, I will make the PDF free to anyone who wants it. Just check out the, uh, the newsletter. You can subscribe using the link in the video description. And I'll be back in about a week or two with the next episode. I hope you'll join me then. Until then, everybody, take care.